Hello everyone and welcome to the episode of Lost in Translation 1. This week we are covering Digimon Adventure 2020, episode 13, Garudamon of the Crimson Wings. I'm May and I'm joined by, as usual... Hi, I'm Quinn. How's everybody? And Stevie is uh, not joining us today, but we will send through their thoughts in Stevie's stance in our discussion portion of the, uh, of the episode. So with all that out of the way, let's move on to the synopsis. So at the start of the episode, in our analyzer sort of feature at the start of every episode, we get a look at Piermon. And apparently her flying has improved thanks to Sora because she used to be a quite a weak flyer. And I just really love this little part that it's all like Sora has actually improved her Digimon. That's so And good. even though it's yeah, even though it's just one cent like throwaway line basically, it's just so nice to know that there's actually some a relationship and some development between the two and it also makes Piermon feel like you know an actual character rather than just a, a we- like in the, in the original the character the Digimon partners always seemed like they were more side characters in the way that they didn't really do much they didn't really have much personality or thought other than they are the Digimon partner of they were the human character the yeah, they were basically weapons that could talk. They were just fun looking swords, basically. But it just it's so nice that they actually have character and these sort of mini sort of who's that Digimon bit at the start of um the episode. I just mm. I really enjoy it. I see for it. Mm. And we get Tentamon next time. So I think in the last episode, I guessed that we'll have Koshiro next because we're sort of jumping between one and the, like, between the groups. And it seemed like Koshiro was about to have some computer problems, but also he's the last one in the Taichi group not to have an evolution. So I guess we are just jumping between the groups. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, you tend to one next time. Anyway, so the main part of the episode begins, um, and just before that, between the analyzer and the opening and the main part of the episode, I'm starting to not enjoy the fact that we spend the first five minutes of the episode, of every episode, not having the episode. Yeah. Like, we have the analyzer, which I love. We have the opening, that's fine. I, 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 love, I love the opening, you can't have, not have the opening. But then I feel like the recap just feels so... It's very superfluous. Yeah. Like, a lot of time it just says, oh, this and this and this and this happens, but you only need to really mention some of those things. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's... I mean, and just this whole evolution arc is feeling very... You can't call it filler because evolution episodes are nominally important, but I'm yeah. pretty certain we've had more evolution episodes than not evolution episodes. Well, yeah, we've gone from one evolution arc to another. We haven't really had anything that's not an evolution arc. Yeah, well, Which nothing. gives me high hopes for the next chunk of episode. I think we're not going to get to Ultimate immediately. I think we're now going... But well, once we're done with the... um Perfect. The... the slew of sort of oh we're getting to perfect yeah i feel like then we're going to introduce tk and kari and we're going to um introduce the character more like other characters that aren't the main characters i hope anyway yeah i mean that would be good mm. i i am losing my faith that it will uh get better soon but i mean who's hoping well there are 66 episodes and i feel like they can't just have evolution arcs forever unless we have like we just spend the whole time getting these evolutions and then we're like okay and now we'll get their secondary evolutions i mean i don't know i feel like we're doing something weird anyway yeah unless we're just getting rid of the um the evolution episodes early before we can move on to some plot which is what i hope like i really hope we're doing that yeah uh... which is not going to be good because I've rated all these episodes pretty highly, and if we move on to some actual plot, I think I'm going to have to start putting 6 out of 10s. Yeah, I, it might even be worth, at, if that does happen, just going through and putting a minus 1 on a bunch of things. Yeah, yeah. oh absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with doing that. As soon as we start getting, like, several 5s in the ro in a row, I think we need to just sort of sit down and reevaluate our rankings, which is good. Like, that's what I want. I want us to say, hey, you know that episode we gave a 5 out of 5? Hey, it's actually a 3. Like, that'd be incredible. Yeah. Like, I always rank episodes of Digimon highly because I'm ranking them in comparison with how I think the rest of the season is going to play out. And, and for my very pessimistic outlook... I'm saying, hey, this episode's not too bad, even though Often in reality it may... Great. No. Like, yeah, a lot of Digimon's not fa not good at all. But you can still say, hey, there's some... Like, there was a really good episode of Cross Wars. Yeah. And it's, like, the best episode in Cross Wars. But compared to other good episodes of Digimon, it's probably only just maybe a 3 or a 2.5 out of 5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so on, to, on to the actual... 
Yeah, so, so this episode. Uh, so Virgimon and the other group still flying and Joe is still airsick. And this is just, this is a hint of what's to come for the episode for Joe, because he basically is just... It really is just pretty... pick on Joe Wig. Yeah. I'm glad that Joe stands up for himself when they say, hey, look, this is the garbage area. And he's like, I'm not garbage. Poor Joe. I, that was I my favourite part. I sent that to a friend of mine who doesn't even watch Digimon and just captioned it. But deep inside, he wondered. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a good caption, actually. I'm, I'm, do you mind if I steal that for the Twitter? <laughs> Fair. Now go like, for it. But poor Joe. Poor like, Joe. poor, poor Joe. This episode has some really good screenshots, actually. <laughs> it does. Like, Canon Beamon helps. Anyway, so Gomamon is the best and is cheering Joe up. And then Sora tells Bergamon to land so that they can uh, have a break. Which is, again, it's showing us that Sora is actually quite caring. She's not, they're not, like, really flogging the fact that she's sort of caring and maternal. Like, they forced on us in Try when they were like, hey, hey, Sora, you're the mother of the group. And so I was like, no, I never wanted to do that. Yeah. The sort of saying, okay, sorry, she's caring, especially to those who are a little bit weaker or that are troubled. I like, still, it's, it's nice. Like, I really feel, felt like this being an evolution episode, I mean, I, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I feel completely certain that if we had swapped out Mimi or Matt or Tai Chi for Sora and just said, oh, yeah, this was this was showing off that crest, you could make just as good an argument. Oh, yeah. And, like, th this caring um, would also be in line with Mimi's personality. She's also right. seen to be quite caring. Which is kind of annoying that they've made the girl characters the caring and compassionate ones. Well, and even even Yamato, like his quest of friendship is is so far able to get him to ultimate on the basis of he no longer wants to be alone literally all of the time. Mm. Unless we're saying that the crest's real awakening is when they get to ultimate, Maybe. as in Mega. I mean. I feel like we're going to need some exposition on that yeah, if we're going to do mm. that. And it's, it's getting to the point where it's really obvious how little exposition we've had besides keep following the giant stone signposts. Oh, I feel like knowing about knowing about Leomon, I think we're going to see Leomon later. And well, that, yeah. I guess, is exposition. Like, I would not be surprised if he shows up in a couple of episodes from now. I haven't read any episode titles, so I, I don't either. know if he shows up. But I can, tell, I, I can just feel like after the evolution episodes... Yeah. We might get a um a Devimon episode. I could see that. And then maybe we'll get an Ogamon episode and then we'll get a Leomon episode, or maybe we'll just go Devimon episode and then Leomon. Yeah, might possibly even combining those into the same episode. Yeah. Or we get a primary village episode to actually teach us where Digimon go and then we and then we'll meet Ogamon again as that a baby. Would be neat. Anyway. I would love to uh, meet Ogamon as a baby, baby just like Ogamon a little goblin mon. Great. Especially if we could finally yeah. clear up why some Digimon remember their past life. Mm. I always thought that it was connection with the um the chosen children, like the Digivice made them able to be rem like remember. Maybe. But that's just that's just how I thought. I mean, that would uh, make anyway, sense, but it yeah. feels like a rule like that should need to be stated. Yeah, well, it's never really had to be stated. I know that they've stated that uh, the reason that Leomon can warp evolve to save yeah. Leomon in the original series was because he had um he, he was basically um stra uh, hit by the Digivice. I guess what I'm saying is I think we need to have more Digimon die and then show back up again later. Yeah. You know, if you're going to make and that a mechanic, don't just use mm. it for Leomon. Oh, even better if they show back up again and they've evolved differently. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Like, imagine if we get um one of the alternate color uh, Ogamons, like Fugamon or any of them, because there's so many, and he's got the same personality, but he's like, oh, this time I'm good. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, yeah. Or, um, well, honestly, I, I before we got Leomon, I was hoping that Ogremon would just get a weird evolution path and become Leomon. Maybe. I, I don't. Think, I, I uh, really don't think that's going to work with the I know in, army thing. I know in the original Virtual Pets, they didn't share an evolution line. I know that Leomon was on the version 4 and Ogremon was on the version 3, but I'm sure in one of the Virtual Pets that I just can't think of, they have... Or at least next order or a hacker's memory, they have like some, some path. Ancestry, yeah. yeah. Anyway, on to the episode, which is the curse of me saying at the start of the episode, "Hey, let's make this a short one." And whenever anyone ever says, "Hey, let's make this a short rec podcast recording," it never ends up being. So I think I should just start every podcast recording with, "Hey, let's make this a long one." 
That would help. Uh, but let's yeah. just try to get on fewer tangents and talk yeah, about this episode. To be fair, to be fair th- that was a good tangent. That was, um, was good. It was, it was a good tangent. Like, better than the episode. Uh, I was pretty into Canon Beamon. Oh, yeah. Canon Beamon is 100% why I love the episode. Well, okay, Canon Beamon is like 70% why I love the episode and like 30% was Sora. Anyway, so uh, they are about to land, but then suddenly Yamato sees Fun Beamon flying away from some Wasmon, which look like they're slightly discolored Wasmon. So it seems like they're like evil wasp- yeah, Wasmon. Which, I mean, I guess they are since they emit evil miasma. Yeah, which again, we're seeing this anything that's evil, uh, or I guess maybe possibly under the control of Devimon or Sound Birdemon, has um, miasma sort of emitting from them, which is kind of. Like, I'm here for that. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're trying to do some sort of environmentalism deal with this. I can't tell you. The real bad guy was climate change all along. Yeah, well, and and then the, by their crests combined, we, we get Captain Planet on. This is just, yeah, this is just Captain Planet. Oh, it's a little bit Captain Planet. Yeah, we've got the crest of heart. The only thing we don't have is a diverse cast. Oof. Though I think Yamato may be white, like, or at least half white. Like, yeah, I always just maybe. thought he was... Because he's, he's, I thought he was half French or something. I've always assumed that about Mimi, especially with her, you know, living half the time I in think, America. I think, but... her, I think her mum is Caucasian. Yeah. And she's um she's maybe, like, half Caucasian. But I think the rest might be Japanese. That makes sense. I guess TK is, like, an ape French or something. Yeah, I think the TK and Yamato are, like, a little bit French. Yeah. Yeah. Because they do have French relatives. Yeah, well, they had, they had French was, grandpa, so... Yeah, but we don't know if he's, like, Japanese but living in France or That's if true. he's just we did talk about grandma being in France with him so you know she could be French yeah but uh it's I mean I guess it's hard to tell with animation when they don't make it super obvious yeah which is fine um in any event yeah. uh as we go through blonde... the canon beamon and we, yeah. we want to save them because fun yeah. beamon no not the canon beamon canon, canon beamon's bad fun, right, fan, right, right. fun beamon is good you can tell because it's got fun in his name and it's got you in the middle. Is it supposed to be fun or fan? I always thought it was fan, but it turns out that it that's just maybe a mistranslation. Okay. But I think it I think it might be fun beam on in the games, but I'm not one hundred percent. Yeah, because I but I thought I, was... I recalled like an actual fan being involved. No, no, this has always been called fan beam on or fun beam on. Huh. But it always made me feel weird because we had like fun like fan beam on, and then we had canon beam on, like not as in a canon, but like as in uh, the canon of the show. <laughs> Uh, so I just, I, I, yeah, I always thought that that's why it was called Fan Beam on. It was just sort of a joke. But anyway, so um, it was just really cool to see some Digimon who haven't really appeared much in much of the anime or like any of the Digimon shows before. Mm-hmm. So it's really nice to see, you know, Fun Beam on, Wasmon, and Canon Beam on. Uh, Sora wonders if uh, if it's a Digimon, which seems an incredibly stupid thing for Sora to wonder. And I feel like Sora keeps on doing this. I mean, in like she's fairness, got like it's a floating building. It's not on the reasonable to say, huh, that thing's sentient. Yeah, it's, um, it's Hal's moving giant cannon beam on, I don't know, they, but it, it is like, huge. I feel like that was the intention of the question was, wow, so there are Digimon like that too, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's absolutely, it's absolutely like that, like it is huge, it is basically an aircraft carrier, and um, also just side thing, why does a bee evolve into a wasp and evolve into a bee, and then I think their fully evolved form is also a wasp. That sounds right to me. So I, I think Digimon doesn't know the difference between. Yeah, they're just all they're yellow and black. It's the same thing, right? But I know I like Fun Beamon. Anyway, so the um the Wasmon are flying the Fun Beamon into the Cannon Beamon, and Sora decides that they should save them. And uh, this again shows how caring she is to those who can't protect herself. But we immediately are disregarding Joe and his air sickness and his overall safe- safety and well being because as soon as Bergamon starts to fly back up. Poor Joe falls off the Bergeron, and he basically just falls to his death. And Gomamon just jumps after him because he's good. He is good. Yeah. Canon Beamon sends out more Wasmon to locate them, and because I guess they saw them. And Yamato and Sora are unable to find Joe and Gomamon in the jungle. But they do find the world's cutest Digimon, Fun Beamon, and I just, I love her so much. She's just so cute and so scared and just so precious, oh. and I just. I love. I, I I love so much. I am gonna be really upset when the fan beamon don't come along. Yeah, I like. I hope that they have a, an episode in the future that's the same as the um, the bit in the original adventure where they all come together to help the children build a raft, yeah. and we just get all the Digimon that they've helped. Well, or 
I mean, considering that we've already got the Leoman gathering an army, it wouldn't be that weird if we just started collecting all of the people we save each week. Like, the episode should have ended it by, like, the fun beam was saying, oh, where can we go yeah, now? We We're so scared. And, and, well, and then either them saying, let's come with you, or Sora saying, hey, I heard there's um, Leomon building, like, a resistance. Yeah, exactly. That's really all you would have needed to move the plot forward in a way that didn't involve a giant stone plinth. Yeah. And then it's sort of like uh, Sora's group's quest to um, to send the Digimon that they ha they help and, sa and save. Yeah, we could to, actually do um, something with that. Yeah, like, that'd be really, really good. And uh, also, they know about Leomon's army. Obviously, the other group don't, but they do. Mm -hmm. So, with that information, they could be doing something with it. But they don't. Yeah, yeah. We, we, there are even cell phones in Digimon now. We could have told each other about it. I think they're just not communicating at all with their Digivices now, which is something I was worried about at the yeah. start of the show. Like, are they going to always use this mechanic? Or as soon as they feel like they should be communicating, they don't? It seems like they definitely should have, even if it was just like two seconds at the beginning of the episode showing that they did check in yeah just like a status update of like um hey, uh, Togemon alive, evolves right? yeah like hey you guys are okay um we've had some evolutions now we have Lilymon and then the other group are like oh yeah we have Wegerumon and Garudamon just like an update like it just feels weird that they haven't given each other like status updates or any information that they might may have, like, oh, we found these ruins and it was some ancient weaponry and they were turned out to be Digimon or something. Just, just give us, like, a minute at the start of them just g keeping each other informed about where the other is. I mean, they could be doing that and it could just be not being shown, but it just feels weird not to be... Um, not to be mentioned. Yeah. 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 So uh, Sora lets the fun beam on know she won't capture them, and she introduces herself. Sora then asks what is happening, and the f we, f we find out that the fun beam on are getting like dark evolved to wasp mom to be um, these warriors, which is kind of like I'm I'm glad that they're kind of possibly mentioning some dark evolution because it's definitely a different coloured wasmon and it's definitely emitting miasma and this and the, the wasmons makes, usually don't. It would make a lot more sense if we're gonna do some of that. Like that explains why you need to capture the the, the fan beamon or the fun beamon um, and force them to evolve rather than just yeah, this is just this is just what all the beamons do apparently. Also this may be somewhat foreshadowing, and I'm probably overthinking this, but imagine if it turns out that Devimon has the power to dark evolve Digimon, and he ends up dark evolving Greymon into Skull Greymon, or Greymon into uh, Metal Greymon Virus, or something, or any of the Digimon. And then we have like a Tri Chapter 3 sort of scenario where they're all fighting like their own Digimon sort of thing, like because they've dark evolved or something along that those lines. Could have been much more interesting than it was in Tri, yeah. Like, I don't know. It, it gives us some. Um, uh, it gives us sort of an idea that that may happen. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That'd be nice. Mm. Um, so, yeah, then uh, then we have, I guess, some love happen with the fan Beamons. Oh, yeah. wait. We, I forgot Which... that Joe ends up in the garbage disposal first, though. Yeah. Well, there's a bit... So, Gavamon is the one to point out that there's miasma, because I guess we don't have any smart characters around to point that out, so we have to have Gavamon be the smart character. Yeah. And then the group here, Joe, yelling for help, and it turns out he's been captured along with the Gomon and Fun Beamon, and Joe wants Gomon to evolve, but then feels sick and says, never mind, which makes no sense at all, yeah. that why he wouldn't... Like, it, it, he, he just told him basically to not evolve because he felt sick, and that just feels... Like, you can feel sick, but you still probably have some self-preservation of not dying and being taken to the Digimon. Nah. Like, it, it, nah. it just feels really weird. Zora wants to rescue them, but Yamato says he has an idea. And then we get an update of what Taichi, Koshiro, and Mimi are doing. They're walking through a desert because it's Digimon. And uh, we get Koshiro mentioning that his laptop is still not working. And Mimi tells Koshiro not to worry and he'll get a new one from her grandfather. And then Taichi and Agumon suggest percussive maintenance like in uh, the original Digimon. I was here for it. Yeah, I was, I was here for that. Like, yeah, Ta I'm glad that they made Taichi still a little bit of an idiot. Like, not like a huge idiot, but just like enough where you're just like, oh, Taichi, hitting things doesn't help. This is one of the few that problems Digimon will not tell you specifically can be solved with fire. Yeah, but only this one. Everything else, fireball. Yeah, yeah. Back to 
Sora and Yamato, we see a group, uh, the, the group are basically just playing heroes and they're rescuing groups of uh, fun Beamon. Sora and Yamato then stand in the way of their Digimon partners from an attack, which... You shall not. It, uh, makes, it, it kind of makes no sense that they would do that, but at the same time, it is very cool. I was here for it, but yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's very cool to see. It does not make sense, but a big, big fan of it. And then they get captured, which I guess was their plan, and... It's my favourite trope in all of fiction where they just say, hey, I have a plan and then they just don't talk about the plan and they just go about doing it. And I feel like there's been a lot of parodies where it's just been like, hey, have a plan and they do like little, those little fake whispers and then the other person goes, what what are you saying? You're just going in my ear. Or hey, you're going to tell me the plan or are you just going to stand there and stare at me? Like, it's sort of... It's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. No, yeah. But okay, it's just a thing that happens in fiction. It's weird. Uh, Go- Goemon has been separated from Joe, and we find out that Joe's been discarded as rubbish as he is not a Digimon, and I just feel so bad for Joe. Like, he's just being called he's rubbish. Like, hey, Joe, you're rubbish. He really is. Yeah, like, he's poor Joe gets... This episode, though. Yeah, he gets harassed this episode. He's sick, and then he's captured, and then... I mean, I'm really glad that the damsel in distress isn't one of the girl characters, but at the same time, it's just... Oh, no. Oh, no, Joe. Joe, poor Joe. It's always Joe. Poor Joe. Like, I, w- I wanted to... Imagine if they swapped places uh, with Yamato, and Yamato was the one that got captured. I would have loved that, because it's just so... It's It would be so, like, not expected for one of the quote-unquote main characters to get abducted like as in Taichi or Yamato anyway moving on so um I've lost myself in my notes because I just got distracted saying that poor Joe anyway so Yamato and Sora's group arrive in the canon beam on and government evolves to Garurumon with an animation sequence Garurumon defeats some Wasmon and they press on. Then Garurumon evolves to where Garurumon with another animation sequence, <sighs> which I say this every episode, I much rather prefer the um, the stylized ones to the uh, the stock footage ones. Like, I, I Yeah, I, I wish that... It, it feels weird that we have, like, only Garurumon and Greymon having these special... Anim- like, well, not special. I say that they're just the, bo- the boring animation sequences, the stock footage it's animation the sequences. The clearly supposed to care more about. Yeah. And it just... It feels like... I don't like... I don't like these. They fit... They're always the same. They always take the same amount of time. I'd much rather prefer them evolving, like, in real time and thematically of just, like... They just start growing and glowing. So I, I I much rather prefer the normal ones. And I say that every episode, and I think I will say that every episode, because it still is, like, it just feels weird that they didn't have all the characters evolve in their own unique ways. It yeah. just feels weird. Anyway, they rescue Joe, and Gomon frees himself with marching fishes, because Gomon is the best and doesn't need to be rescued. And then they ask for more help to rescue the rest of the fun Beamon in the other cages. The group then becomes surrounded by Wasmon, and where Gurumon bursts through the ground. Hyomon gets her longest evolution sequence yet, but she's still just engulfed in flames and sort of shows up, but thematically she's like a phoenix, so that can't, I, I don't have any problem with her it actually evolving in that way. Um, even if it did yeah. seem a little lower budget than yeah. it would it was It was the, like, basically more or less an expanded version of uh, her first evolution from her evolution episode. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was longer, so it, it, it feels better that it's longer, it doesn't feel just sort of this sudden like evolution <laughs> but i'm I, I like it and then we see the weirdest show of strength that i've ever seen in any digimon that just makes no sense sora is carrying both goemon and joe with one arm also, i don't know what she's doing at the gym fire. yeah she's one fireproof and two very strong like that's a lot like i don't think i could carry a child and a dog on one arm like or maybe maybe i could but definitely not when i was 10 yeah and not definitely not an older taller child yeah yeah i mean you can give a bit to adrenaline but it's uh how much, it's a lot how much does like a 12 year old boy weigh like that's got to be like 50 kilograms right yeah give or take 50 yeah I don't think I could suspend a 50 kilogram child and like maybe a 10 kilogram dog in the air. Like that's 60 kilograms on one arm, maybe well, between 40 and 60 kilograms. And that's if like Joe's very skinny. So that's still a lot of weight to carry. Yeah, I think I could just about do it, but it'd be, it'd be tough. Like suspending them in air? Like yeah. maybe like for like a second? 
Sure. But her arm would be ripped out of the socket. Yeah, no, that's that's way too much, especially at her age. Like, Jesus. Yeah, she's ten. As I say, even even at my age, I don't think I could do it. Like I like I could don't think I could probably carry like a weight for like a small amount of time. But not suspended, and not something that's like there's it's there's a difference between lifting a weight and then lifting something that's not a weight that weighs that much because humans move and they wriggle and they are also like their weight is not evenly distributed. A weight has its weight evenly distributed. A human does not. Yep. Also, there's a dog. <sighs> yeah. Well, a seal. Se- seals are seals are obviously heavier than dogs. Come I don't know why I'm such I, a good doggo though. Yeah, I don't know why I said dog and not seal, but anyway, very heavy, extremely heavy. Sora is clearly the tankest in the show, and we just didn't know it. Yeah, but Sora's I'm glad just for be it. With those just ridiculous, ridiculously buff butch girls. Yeah, she's just like, oh, flower arranging. I don't fl- I only arrange weights with flowers on them, and then I punch them and break them. I don't know. Like it, it's weird, but it's bizarre. But I kind of that's so heavy though. <laughs> anyway, like it's, it's, it's insane. Uh, so Joe and Akakamon are fighting off the Wasmon, while the other two fly back to the Cannon Beamon to rescue the Fun Beamon. Yamato and Wegurumon enter the Cannon Beamon to rescue them, and uh, Bergamon and Sora fly around outside. And then we have another fantastic screenshot of the episode, which is uh, Wegurumon holding two Fun Beamon in his arms, and he looks like he's trying to be impressive, but like also they look he's like holding these t- like six kilograms total. Yeah, he looks like he's showing up at a convention and he's trying to pretend he didn't just buy these two adorable plush toys. Like, he's just like, I am very strong. I am very cool. I am very manly. Ignore the plush toys in my arms. Like, it, You're it's the best. You're absolutely right. Because, um, yeah, he's he's so edgy and then he has a fun beam on. Mm. And the, the, the weird thing is, like, I took quite a few screenshots for this episode, but I don't think any of them actually have Garudamon in it. Like, it's just it's just all fun Beamon and Joe being garbage, which I think also has fun Beamon in it. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, the best moment in the show is definitely uh, Wegramon holding the fun Beamon in his arms. Our Bergamon flies back around the cannon Beamon, and the cannon Beamon charges a huge cannon at them, which ends up blowing up a mountain. And Bergamon starts attacking, but it basically does nothing to the cannon Beamon. Sora thinks of Joe and Yamato fighting, and it's very similar to... Yamato thinking about everyone else fighting. Except that Sora also thinks about the fun beamon that she wants to save. And she promises to save them all, and that activates her crest and allows Bergamon to evolve to Garudamon. And then she's able to defeat the Cannon Beamon, and everyone thinks that Garudamon is very cool because she very much is, but also Cannon Beamon was huge. Like, I feel like they made Cannon Beamon seem a lot stronger than they did for the other um, Ultimate Level Digimon that we've seen so far. Yeah, yeah, that seems fair. Uh, Garudamon is also just like an order of magnitude larger than everyone else, mm. which and has is also kind of cool. always been. Yeah, but it's so weird to me that Wegurumon literally burst through the Cannon Beamon's like lower half, and that didn't do anything to the Cannon Beamon. Like he didn't just burst through like a building or anything; he burst through a living creature. It's true. Yeah. Well, mm. and and just like rip it, like amputated part of Cannon Beamon, who then exploded. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then we get a, an update with the other group, and meanwhile we see that Koshiro's laptop is connected again, and he mentions that the next canyon is where they are meeting up with Yamato's group. I don't know when this information uh, was passed between them, but I'm guessing that they actually are in contact. They're just doing a bad job of showing it. Yeah. Because well, they have too much recap at the start of the episode. Maybe I've just forgotten, but why did we need to split up? What did they accomplish by going in two different directions? Uh, because they didn't know which one would be dangerous. It turns out the answer was both. Okay, so splitting up was just the stupidest idea. Yes. Okay, yeah. Never split which is what, Which is what I said. Like, well, split the party because it's good for character development, but also split it in a way that makes sense. And that was my argument that they didn't explain why they couldn't just fly directly over because they are very clearly flying over some things. Right, well, at least in pretty sure Bergeron's one of group. these things is going to be dangerous, go as a group. Yeah. Like, it doesn't but make I'm sense. Glad that <laughs> three of us might be only... safe while three of us die. Yeah, they, they only split it up for plot. Like, it was 100% only because, hey, the script told them to split up. Yep. And that's... I think that's why I hated that that episode. That I'm just like, it just they didn't give any reason why they couldn't fly over the the swamp. They had lots of reasons why they 
couldn't, but they never said any reason why they couldn't. Yeah. And they just sort of felt like they're forcing a split because they need to have character development and they can't spend like an episode with seven characters paying attention to only one because then they still have six characters. Yeah. You know? If you're going to do a, a split for no reason like that, you could have at least just had three of them fall off a cliff so that it made sense. All of them, all them having a disagreement like, hey, I think we should go this way. What about we go this way? Hey, I agree with that guy. Let's go this way. That no, what? No, I agree with her. Too. This yeah, way. Like, give me something. Give me something other than just, okay, well, let's go now. And I literally, like, I don't even think I realized at first that they had split up because why would you split up? Yeah, I mean, the Dark Masters arc had them basically have disagreements. Like, Mimi wanted to mourn the loss of the Digimon that had died, mm -hmm. and they sort of split off for those reasons. That was so much better, and that's probably one of the best uh, examples of a uh, separation arc because each character got their time to shine in the episodes. Yeah, they did and not bring th them that back was cool. together in a way that was satisfying, but they at least tried. Oh, I think. I think Mimi and Joe showing up with an army of Digimon was fairly cool. It was. The army then proceeded to not do anything. And like, yes, Matt okay, it was cool to, to see. For a minute. Yeah, he went off because he was told by a tree to kill his friend and he kind of almost did it. And then Sora decided to be emo for a minute for even less reason. Yeah, and then was rescued. And not was not saving herself. Or Piyomo didn't save her, the boys did. No, no, we just anyway. had to ship her with, with Yamato. Yeah. Anyway. And uh, anyway... Taichi once again says that he's going to beat up the laptop because when Taichi asks what is happening at home, Koshiro's laptop is slow again. It's buffering. So, yeah, it's buffering and Taichi's like, hey, I know there's lag and all, but how about if I just started to punch it? Yeah, that was it for the episode. Uh, I just feel like, imagine if... Just a quick thing before we move on to the discussion. Imagine if instead of the uh, the recap at the start of every episode, the recap was actually narrated by one of the characters and it was just set in a um, as an update that they were sending through to the other part of the group. Oh, that'd be really good. Like, that's a way to, to address the fact that we don't know if they're in communication, but also still have a recap. Mm. So, and I just thought that just then because I was rem remembering just how we were complaining, like, well, how I was complaining at the start of the episode, how it was just a recap, and then... Just write it into the plot. Have it be the characters saying, hey, last time uh, Lilymon happened and then there was some ruins. And then just have them talk. Have the characters communicate because I guess they must be in communication if they're saying the thing about the canyon, but we haven't seen any communication because we don't have the time between um, all the evolutions. Well, it's, and it's the either recap. that or, like, he's just able to track their GPS signal. Yeah. You want, either one of which is fine, but yeah, if you're going to make yep. it so that he can just always find them anywhere in the world, you need to tell us that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, discussion time. We'll start with our highlights, as always. What were your highlights, Quinn? Oh, Tanakimon was a very cool design. Yeah, I, I do like... I mean, obviously my favourite was the fun Beemon in the episode, but Canon Beemon is very cool. Yeah, I It's just, very I like, much like... That is not a design that we do a lot of. Yeah, which... There should be more like giant airships in Digimon, because mm -hmm. they look very cool. They do. Um, so yeah, that was a, a big one. Uh, Gomamon being just the goodest doggo. Good highlight. Yeah. Go um, Gomamon is very good. They're all very good and I like I like the Digimon I just like seeing Digimon that haven't shown up in previous seasons as much yeah, showing no, up big fan. Uh... also the Mons of the Week seem to be more than just hey they're there they seem to actually have somewhat of a personality I mean compared to other seasons a little bit and, and the fights are Except a lot for more practical in a way that they definitely did not to be which is really mm. helpful yeah it's not just like hey let's uh, let's shoot the bigger flame yeah that's not the, uh, the the way to win it seems to actually have to think about the uh, the what, what's what's happening in the battle the sort of the tactics behind it the positions that everyone's in the things you can do the things you can't do and that's yeah. sort of it's nice to see um, other highlight uh I was trying to remember if it didn't usually get a good highlight out of She was. She uh, said uh, that it was she, her grandfather could replace Koshiro's laptop. Oh, that's right. So, okay, she was a good, but not really enough to make a highlight. Um, yeah, um, it, my highlight was definitely Sora having the character that we saw in episode 11, how she wants to save uh, the Digimon. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of nice how we had Yamato mention that uh, he expected that uh, Sora would be unable to leave the fun beam on behind, that she would say that it, they had to save them because of the same with the name on, which makes Yamato seem awful that he wouldn't 
stay behind to be a hero and save the fun beamon? Yeah, I don't know. Um, on the other hand, I know, it, Joe it seems nice. definitely did not come along to help. No, I feel like he would have, but he had to be captured yeah, for the script. Yeah, anyway, they just, like, and even initially, they just were like, okay, let's let's set him down. And Sora's like, okay, I'm gonna go. Was surprised when Matt stayed behind, which meant that Joe was just the only one who left the group and then got captured because, ugh. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, well, he fell off the Bergeron. Like, he he didn't leave on purpose. Yeah, well, fair. And then he had to fight on the ground, so he that, that's fine. Like, he it, it would be too heavy to have an Ikakumon flying in the air anyway. Oh, I will say, I did like Gabumon just shooting down a missile that was coming at them. Yes. That was nice. That was, Gabumon was very cool. Uh, it's nice that they all evolved. Yeah. Because it makes sense for them all to evolve. And that's been my complaint, even in this season before, like, hey, why don't they all just evolve? And other seasons have often had the problem of nobody evolves, either for a plot reason or for no reason in a um, an, an episode that's an evolution episode. So it was nice that these evolution episodes are actually having all of the other Digimon evolve, because they should be evolving unless there's a plot reason but most of the time it's plot very convenient reason yeah but uh yeah so i had a cup i had a couple of highlights here i really did like the fact that we were using sora's character in the way that we saw building in episode 11 it made it seem like there was sort of they didn't just throw this hey she's caring out of nowhere we already saw that she was caring mm -hmm. and that's that's nice. It's nice that we didn't just get, hey, this is her character, by the way, in her episode and then not before. But yeah, uh, yeah that's definitely. basically it for my highlights, though. Yeah, like, it, from an action standpoint, it was a fairly good episode. From a character development yeah. standpoint, it was okay. It was basically just episode 11 again, but yeah. with more Sora. Yeah. And hey, I like Because I can't but... remember. <laughs> I don't think... In episode 11, I don't think Joe did much either. No, he did get caught but, garbage this time. Yeah, and then he st he stood up for himself. He did, he did. Go, Joe. I like Joe. Um, are we ready to move on to the lowlights? Yeah, looks to me. Yeah, so my main lowlight is that it felt sort of... So it felt a little bit like filler. It really did. Um, it, it just felt like a general, like, hey, we go we go to a place, there's some Digimon need rescuing, there's an evil monster we have to defeat, and then we leave. And then, it, but the only thing that didn't make it filler was the fact we got an evolution from it. Yeah. We didn't really learn anything about the world. Or the we just saw, I mean, potentially there was, as I said, possible foreshadowing in the way that we know that the, the, the miasma seems to be making a dark version of the Waspmon. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Because that's very much not what Waspmon looks like. But again, the episode felt a little bit like shallow and empty. It really uh, did. Not as much uh... as the um, the Metal Greymon episode, which I think felt fairly shallow and empty, or a couple of episodes before it, there was another one, but it definitely felt emptier than it should have. It it felt very sort of basic. It felt like, hey, we need an evolution episode. Let's just put one in a filler episode because it felt very much like filler. It really did. Um, and that's, I think, really been my issue is just had an evolution arc where none of the evolution felt particularly satisfying. Now we're almost through our second one where none of the evolutions have been very satisfying. I mean, both time, both evolution arcs, Mimi's evolutions felt thoroughly satisfying. That's fair, but in general, and like I said earlier, mm. you know, if you... If you had not had uh, Yamato's Where Guru Bimon episode already, just made it his, you know, friendship and caring for the fun Bimon that he met two minutes ago, that would make, you know, be just as emotional yeah. as, as it would be Sora, emotional. But the Bimon does not want because she does not want them dead. Mm. And, and the crests seem very similar between uh, Joe, uh, sorry, not Joe, um, he hasn't even had a crest yet, Although uh, Yamato too. and Sora. Yamato, Sora, me, and I would say Joe all appear to have exactly the same one, and it's not like courage is super different. Courage was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Taichi always had courage from episode one. Right. Um, no one has I, I have a good yet. feeling about Koshiro, because Koshiro's doesn't relate to his emotions. That's fair. Really? Like, it, it, it relates to his, like, curiosity yeah. and knowledge, which I guess, with that, his, is a, that is an emotion. With his laptop going on the fritz, we may have to finally confront how do we make Koshiro useful to the group if his deus ex machina you know, doesn't work. Yeah, and it's again, and I think I mentioned this in the last episode, we're going to learn, hey, is is Koshiro smart, or do he just know how to use Google? That's a real good question these days, because it so far really leans towards how to use Google. The things yeah. he's brought Co to the group are, I can tell you what's happening in Tokyo, because I still have... Yeah, and that's all, from, from episode one, he was just like, hey, if I consult my tablet... Mm -hmm. 
it's not been according to my knowledge, which uh, Koshiro's laptop didn't work like basically from the get go in the original series, mm. but now it's working the entire time, or at least it's seeming to work so far. So I feel like I have good hopes for the next episode because I feel like it's going to be based around hey, is Koshiro actually smart? And then we're going to find out the guess he is. He has the crest of knowledge or wisdom or whatever. But, uh, yeah. But the, I mean, we're not even talking about this episode. The, the point is, uh, the, my overall low light of the episode was the fact that it was empty and shallow and felt like filler and it shouldn't have. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. I I feel like I don't know more about Sora's character than I did in episode 7. Yeah, I mean, I felt like episode 11 at least. A little bit, but... Yeah, it just felt like an add-on to episode 11, which, again, I, I liked. I'm glad they grew, they, um, they grew on something that was already established they continued on from that but again did not feel as much as it could have been the um the pre-evolution flashbacks of everyone fighting seemed so much like um Yamato's thoughts before we got to uh Wegurumon all the time where his crest just activated for a power up so it felt yeah just not not as good as it could have been. Pretty much, yeah. Mm. Uh, any other lowlights? Uh, Weirgururumon being weirdly useless for a lot of this was kind of odd, and is only really explainable by, well, it's an evolution so... Mm. But other than that, yeah. I guess it's fine. Yeah. Um... Flying should be a bigger deal than it is, but ultimately yeah. every landbound Digimon just jump real high. Yeah. <laughs> or just say, stay on the ground if you're a large landbound friend. Yep. Also, I don't know if this is a low light or a highlight, but just Sora carrying like more than her body weight, like one like one hundred percent. At the end of the day, that is more than her body weight. Yeah, yeah. That she is she, carrying. She holds that. Also, a twelve year old boy, like they can be quite heavy it's because good. that's you know, I that that they are about to hit, they are hitting or about to hit puberty, and will probably has has started to form muscles of some kind. Even if he's lanky, he'll still have some weight on him. And mm. also, um, I know I said dog before, but that's not a good example because Gomamon is a seal, and seals are like like lo- a lot of They're body fat. Big. They're very heavy. Yeah. Um, also, but, uh, oh, yes, oh, oh, that was my other thing. big highlight, was Gomamon yeah. um, using marching fishes as a, land, uh, as a way of getting around on land is just the best thing. Oh, Gomamon is just the best thing. He's the, the whole fact that he was able to escape on his own. Like, everyone else had to rescue Joe, but not Gomamon. Gomamon is a hero I himself. Alright, we know canonically that marching fishes can fly, so we should just use Gomamon as all of our transportation outline. And again, another reason why they couldn't... I don't know why they couldn't have just gone over the swamp. Yep. They have marching fishes. Cover the swamp mm. with the fishes. And I don't know. The it... house with the lemon. Yeah. I just... Don't know why they couldn't just do that. Any other lowlights? Uh, just this whole arc feeling like we need to fill out six episodes before we can do something fun again. Yeah, I'm really hoping that we get, once we're done with the evolutions, I'm really hoping that we get some actual good episodes again. And I think we will, but I'm very hopeful. But again, I think that if we do have good episodes, we'll have to reevaluate the ranking, which is, you know, the, the goal, basically. Yep. But I'm also doubtful, but also hopeful. It's sort of like a weird 50-50 split. Pretty much, yeah. Want to move on to comparisons? Sounds reasonable. Uh, comparisons? I don't really have that many. I think we already discussed uh, quite a few, like Koshiro basically using his laptop the entire time. Uh, there's, there's no Sora's mum involved, and I was actually happy that it, was, it wasn't It was love in terms... I was really worried it was going to be a shipping episode, and it wasn't. It wasn't love in terms of the, the romantic love. It wasn't love in terms of, like, parental love. It was just general love and I care. I would like to see a bond between Sora and Kiyoman that was said definitely not highlighted this episode. It was highlighted in the analyzer in the first 30 seconds. That's how little it was highlighted. Yeah, and, and going with the love just care about other people and not want to die. Mm. Also, that's exactly this friendship and... Yeah, but again, I think that the, um, the crests, because we haven't been given a name for them yet, I feel like they will be given a name once we're done with these evolutions, and then the key to evolving to Mega slash Ultimate is 
is developing those uh, those traits and having bonds with your partner. I would think so far I I am not especially hopeful that we will get some of that thought out. Mm, yeah, but I, I can be hopeful. Any other comparisons with the original series besides the the mum not being a key um, part of it or any character? Uh, not specific episode, but comparing where we were in the original uh, at what episode number are we now? 13. 13. I think we just met Edamon. Yeah, so we we just met Edamon. We've already killed uh, uh, Devimon, presumably still the bad guy now. Yeah, we've seen him twice, but the characters haven't seen him. Yeah, so we're we're going a lot more slowly overall story structure as we want everyone to finally do like. Yeah, well, I think Devimon's just going to eat a bunch of ultimates or something. Oh, probably. Mm. But yeah, it just seems like they're grinding before they meet the boss, and then they get to the boss, and they're just like, oh, we overgrinded. Yep. <laughs> Overground? Anyway, um, I don't really have that many, uh, that, that much comparisons, because this episode was fairly different to anything that we saw in, um... Yeah, in Digimon like, Adventure. Yeah, this was a new and different idea, so I'm here for that much at least. Yeah. I actually really did like uh, Sora's original evolution to Perfect episode. It felt like she had a character. This one, she still feels like she had a character, but it's and it's a little bit different, but it's still like not as much as, oh, my mother really loved me the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And we, we did not get anyone declaring that they could feel anyone else's love, so... Which is sad, yeah. because I like the feeling of love. It's true. I'm a big fan. Mm. Or would be. Uh, Ready to move on to. Ready to move on to favorite character. Sure. Uh, All right. My favorite character was um was Sora. Yeah, I'm I'm up there between Sora and Gomamon. Gomamon was really good. Gomamon was good. So are you picking Gomamon or Sora? I think I'm gonna go Gomamon. That's fair. I, I I picked Sora, so I guess it, it that, that's a fair thing because my character my look my favorite character would have been um fan like fa- fan slash fun beamon if um oh before we reveal Stevie's favorite character why don't we read their thoughts yep oh uh, no I, no I was gonna put that in uh, Stevie's stance which is okay. after all this yeah so first uh Stevie's favorite character which is we're revealing the spoiler on Discord uh Matt unfortunately. He was the main strategist and did the best job of acting in his friend's interest. That's an interesting, um... That's fair. That's an interesting response, yeah. I I did appreciate that we at least got a little bit of a pretend character growth out of him with the, oh, you're actually care enough about other people to try to help with this. Yeah. So, you know, it's something. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I actually, I, yeah, I agree with that. I like Sora because it was nice to see her care, but Matt is also a fine choice. So we all chose different characters, but I can all, uh, I can agree with all of them as being good characters. There weren't any real stats. No, except for the fa- the fun beam on. Yeah. Uh, so what about the episode uh, rating out of five? Because I definitely scored far too high, but I'm just sticking by this rating because I did like this episode. Uh, what, what's, uh, what, what was your rating out of five before I go to mine being entirely too high? I think I'm gonna say a three was nothing special, but it was fine. Yeah, I uh, I gave it a four out of five. I was sort of umming and ahhing between just lowering it to a 3.5, but I'm going to keep it a 4 because I really did like the fun beam on. I really did like seeing Digimon that we haven't really seen much of before. I really liked seeing Sora caring about other characters. I was really happy uh, because this episode didn't turn into just a shipping episode, and also I was fairly pessimistic going into this episode because of how little we've seen of Sora having a personality. So I guess I was I gave it a surprised four, but in reality it, a three is probably a better fit. But I'm going to keep it to be a four because I did like this episode, and then I looked at other episodes. I gave it a, a four out of five, and I think I enjoyed this episode more than the um than the Where Gururumon episode, which I also gave a four. So yeah, it, it stays as a four for me, but it's probably too high. Uh, Stevie gave it a three out of uh, out of five. Which, again, it, it was probably best to be fitted as a three, but I'm going to keep it being a four on the basis that it's just better. And also, um, I'm looking at the ratings that we've all given the episodes, and this we gave it the exact same rating as um, episode 11, which was the Wegurumon episode, mm. which I gave a four, and Stevie and Quinn both gave threes. <laughs> so, next, the... Uh, the ranking, uh, which I have now put up our overall thoughts on the website. If you go to lostintranslationmon.com, we've actually included a link in the header, so you can actually see our overall ranking. And I'll get something. Uh, I'll, I'll put. I'll probably convert this to a Google Sheet so you can see the um, 
our ratings update in real time. Mm. So next, the ranking um, in terms of how we'd put it. Um, my top three and bottom three do not change this week. My top three, episode 12, The Limon Blossoms, episode 6, The Target Kingdom, and then in third place, episode 5, The Holy Digimon. And then from worst to least worst, episode 10, The Evolution of Steel, episode third, uh, sorry, episode three, Enter the Digital World, episode eight, The Children's Siege, and I'm putting episode 13 in at fifth, uh, which is just above episode 11, but below episode one. Uh, Quinn, where are we putting this? Uh, your ranking, which I sent through earlier, but I'll read out your top three and bottom three. Episode six, The Target Kingdom, episode 12, The Limon Blossoms, episode one, Tokyo Digital Crisis, and your bottom three from worst to most okay. Episode 10, The Super Revolution of Steel. Episode 4, Bergen on Source. Episode 3, Enter the Digital World. Uh, where would you uh, put this? And I've also sent the episode ratings out of 5, yeah. I believe. Uh, so I think I'm going to put it right in the middle at uh, the 7 spot. So right between the episodes seven 7 spot. and 8. So between 7 and 8, yep. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a fair place for it. I guess we both agree that it was better than um, episode 11. Uh-huh. which is good. But uh, now we'll look at Stevie's, and Stevie is putting it between the wolf standing atop the desert and with the super evolution of steel beneath it. So that is putting it in at, if I consult my list, is coming in at 8th, which makes our overall very hard to update because, or maybe not, because both just two of us have put it above episode 11 and one of us has put it below episode 11. And because we have a draw for a... Uh, the overall score being 10. So would you agree it would go... Uh, what, did, what did we give episode... F- yeah, so it goes below episode 5, but above episode 11. That's episode so 5 fun. was... Episode 5 being the uh, the holy Digimon. Yeah, which, yeah, that sounds right. Which got a 10.5. Yeah. So I will um, update our overall ranking on the website, and then you'll be able to see our overall ranking, which is shaping up to actually be pretty, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And again, I'll find a way to uh, share our entire uh, thoughts sheet to uh, people. Then I'll probably just convert it to Google Sheets and embed that on the website or something. That's what I like. Yeah. Well, yeah, Google embedding's pretty good. I remember when I first started the podcast and there wasn't much to embed. I had to get a lot of um, uh, third-party plugins for WordPress. But now, like, Google has a lot of embedding now. So it's like, yes, not, not that many plugins. <laughs> Yay. So uh, next we'll go to Stevie's Stance, where I read out Stevie's thoughts and reveal them on Discord because they have a spoiler tag around them. So click. Uh, Stevie says, it was a fine episode, but I'm quickly growing bored of these Digivolution episodes. Mimi's has been the standout one so far. Sora's was just kind of bland. I loved Canon Beamon and really liked the concept of a mega structure yeah. being a whole Digimon, which was, yeah, really, really cool. But they never really explore that in any depth, which is disappointing, and I would agree with that. They kind of have Sora saying, hey, is, is that a Digimon? And then they just move on. Yeah, it had a real storming the Death Star feel for, like, a hot second, especially when mm. Joe ended up in the trash compactor, but... Yeah, it was very Star Wars. That. Yeah, but... It was be Star Wars. Yeah. And it was, uh, I, I like the whole setup that was a hive inside. Yeah, like, that, that, that was, was pretty cool. cool for me. No, I was here for that. Anyway, anyway, back to reading Stevie's stance. If they'd formulated a plan to target its core and offensive weaponry, then I'd have appreciated the cl- climactic explosion a lot more. Yeah. Finally got another Bergamon Digivolution sequence, and it is indeed just boring flames. Eh. Gargamon's Digivolution is a lot cooler, though, and I like that it all takes place during flight. Kind of wish Sora had, you know, reacted to it. At all. Which I would agree with. Yeah. Sora did not react. She was just kind of like, oh, evolution. Ah, okay, well, that's to be expected. Like mm. I guess, like, maybe at this point, so little it would surprise you. It doesn't even anyway, uh, them. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sora... Uh, sorry, so I, I just called Stevie Sora. Stevie then continues to say, Overall, my main complaint is that the episode probably featured more contribution from Matt than Sora, which is just disappointing. And yeah, I would, I would kind of agree. He had, like, strategy, and he had, like, the plan. It wasn't really Sora's plan. Sora just sort of said, Hey, I care about things, and Yamada was like, Fine, okay, I guess I care about things too. But, uh, yeah, so I, I, I agree with Stevie's thoughts on that. I, um, I'm glad that everyone's ratings of this episode weren't that much lower than mine. It was only a three. I think I would have felt really bad if it was just a two or a one. Yeah, no, I mean, this wasn't horrible. It just wasn't mm. as good as it could be. It was very flat. 
which is a three is a it's a good rating for a flat episode a 2.5 or a three that's that's a flat episode of just like it happened it wasn't terrible but it just wasn't good <laughs> but i'm reading through a lot of the uh the the red the pinned uh reddit discussion thread on this episode and like everyone seems fairly split on the episode seem people seem to like really just not like it at all and then other people really 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 like it like it seems like there's no one who just says like oh yeah whatever and my my Tamagotchi Ocean is dying. That is tragic. Uh, I'm sorry for the beeping. Um, I guess all good things must die. I got it to teen finally, but uh, yeah, I was I was going to do a video update with that today. Guess I'm not. Um, so yeah, that's sad, and it's just going to beep in the distance because it's like a it's just going to do that now. It's a lot better than the Digimon bricks, um, and it's a lot better than this episode. But I still really liked this episode. Um, and yeah, it, it seems like a lot of people are just sort of split on the uh, the episode being just okay or just terrible or like, yeah. I, I liked it though. I really liked this episode, but uh, I can understand why people would not because n not much happened. Um, yeah, so are we okay to move on to questions or do we have any comments about Stevie's stance? No. That, that seemed pretty in line with what we were saying. Um, we didn't focus on that as much, but that's a fair point. Yeah, like, it, uh, we didn't focus on Matt because we shouldn't have focused on Matt. He wasn't the focus, but he very much appeared to be in the episode more than well, Joe, for example. This was a Sora-centric episode, so we needed some man to come along and do the important work. That sucks. I wish Yamato got captured and it was just Sora rescuing Joe yeah, and uh, Yamato. Yeah. So much better. But uh, yeah, I told you this was a curse of an episode, say, starting an episode with, hey, let's make this a, a short one. Yeah, I'm sorry about It was that. so long, my Tamagotchi died. Aww. Oh. Anyway, um, moving on to questions, we have Snorlax, in all capitals, on YouTube. The name is in all capitals, their response wasn't in all capitals, I should make that clear. Anyway, Snorlax, all capitals, says, Too bad, only Ogamon and Gavamon will get special evolution sequences. And again, Lilymon definitely definitely shows she's the weakest ultimate in terms of raw power among the Digi Destined. They even combined Flower Cannon and Temptation into one attack to make it useful. By the way, they made Flower Cannon into Flower Machine Gun, lol. Um, I would disagree with that, because Temptation is um, Rosemond's attack, yeah. and uh, also... And also, like, I feel like I did not get the impression that she was the weakest at all. No, God. Like, she defeated Andromon where Metal Greymon struggled, and, yeah, Flower Machine Gun was pretty cool, mm -hmm. and, uh... Yeah, I, I, I like the attack. I, she didn't get her powers, but she was the only person consistently non lethal Yeah, and that's always very cool because a lot of the Digimon we find are just under the influence of being evil. They're not actually evil. In fact, I think this yeah. might be the first time to have Digimon. Out. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of her episodes have just been, um, subdue the bad guy. Well, in the original, I mean. Oh, she... Did she kill Dromojimon? I have to check. I think Dromojimon. Swole Mojimon. Uh, next, uh, we have Grey Tanuki on YouTube, who says, It seems a bit off to me for people to compare this show, uh, where the show has characters at this point to the original show, had them, and they're per when the perfect levels were being reached. In the original, it could be argued with a few stretches that the characters' crest traits were shown during the episodes getting to adult, but when further into the show, at the point where perfect was, released, was reached, the character arcs had reached a point where they had cu uh, accumulated. Can't talk when I'm talking quickly, apparently. It makes sense considering that Perfect was the peak evolution stage at that time. I expect that we'll see these versions of these kids have the crest traits exemplified when they get to ultimate stage. And yeah, I, w I would agree to that. Um, I I hope that we get to see like the crest shown again when we get to ultimate and this was just sort of like a little bit of a taster. Yeah, that would be interesting, and it definitely seems like they're going to go somewhere if they are going to give every child uh, Ultra Flash Mega. Yeah, and also, you could also argue that the evolution to adult in this season was also um, shown uh, yeah. with some crests. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, just a little bit. Uh, the next one is from Suck634 on YouTube, who said, Would be so cool if Digimon 2020 ended with Barbamon, Rosemon's side evolution, and Digimon, mega form of Gomon, retelling their story to a bunch of baby Digimon about the days with their partners. <gasps> That'd be so That's cute. Good. Mm. Uh, next, we have Anthony De La Rosa on YouTube, who says, On some level, I really appreciate how absolutely morbid and raw this episode was, being the last episode. Lilymon's flower cannon being the manifestation of Mimi's pain, her evolution being driven by Mimi's rage and her sorrow, like Mimi's crest is the crest of purity, so doing a little bit of fandom theory crafting, I guess, theoretically, it's not even just her rage and sorrow, but specifically the unrelenting, all-consuming purity of her rage and sorrow, like the intensity. 
The fact that there was nothing else in her mind in that moment. Then you have this beautiful creepiness as Andromon's slowly eaten up by the vines and the moss and the grass. And then Mimi's screaming grief as she realised what she did to a Digimon, who was, at the end of the day, fundamentally innocent and, in a previous series, a flat out good guy. It's just so good. Throughout the episode, which kind of careened from sappiness to sort of um, model and horror, and then back again, over and over and over, without it feeling jarring, cheap, or unfocusedly focused, it all just works. And I would agree with that, I, absolutely. It's, it's a great way of putting it. A very solid episode. Yes, that last episode was really good, and I think that when, it, well, if, I'm just hopefully saying when, we have to, like, reevaluate our ratings out of five, I think that if that's still going to be a five out of five, it, because it basically was a six. It was a really good episode. It was a good show of Mimi's emotions and why purity is different from, for example, Joe's crest, which is reliability. It's always seemed very similar, but hers is, like, just her genuineness of her emotions, and it's just... It's just really great, and Mimi's a great character. The episode was good. Um, I, I will always think that episode is good. Even if we get better episodes, that episode will still be good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, any other thoughts before we wrap this up? No, let's wrap this up. Let's. Did you wrap this up? Yeah. And so I can mourn my Tamagotchi Ocean like Mimi would expect me to do. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. You can join us next time for episode 14, The King of the Insects Clash. Do we have any predictions? Koshiro. I'm yeah, well, going to go yeah. with Laptop finally kicks it for a bit. Oh, absolutely. I feel like this episode, and I know we've sort of said our predictions already, but I feel like this episode's going to highlight, hey, is Koshiro actually smart or is it just his laptop and he knows how to Google? Is he just asking Google things or is he actually just sort of smart and maybe without more it? Do the show's writers know how to make a character look smart without having them Google things? Yeah. And I hope that the answer is yes. Obviously, it's enough to get his crest to activate because that seems implied by the um, yeah. the title. We don't get um, Atla Kabuterimon mentioned in the title. I forget. But, is, uh, yeah. is this our last one from the six we have so far? Uh, uh, Joe. Right, right, right. Okay. Everyone forgets about Joe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking if it was the last one, I could see them going an interesting direction with his not working, but uh, clearly not. Yeah, I hope not. I hope that we're actually getting Joe to evolve. I hope we're not. Like, I want them all to get their evolutions out of the way in this sort of batch of episodes. I don't want it to take a pause like it did in the original, where we just have a couple of characters, like two characters, two or three characters not being able to evolve. Yeah, definitely. I just, I'd um, want them all to be on the same playing field. And I think if you were going to do you know, one person who just can't get their evolution to work for a while, you would have wanted to do it with Ty or Matt, and we're obviously not going to do that ever. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful for the next episode. Yeah. I really, also, I think I just like Taichi's group more than this. I mean, I love Joe, and Sora's great, but I feel like I prefer the characters in Taichi's group more than the characters in, in Yamato's group. There's definitely a lot more of a sense of a group to them than yeah. these three who just kind of felt left over. Yeah, absolutely. Any other predictions or thoughts? Uh, no, but it turns out I have to run to the store, so I'm going to call it early. Okay, I will just read the outro. Well, thanks for, for joining me, Quinn, and you can leave and send me the recording and I'll just uh, finish off the outro on my own. Sounds good. Bye, everybody. Right, th thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me, Quinn. Bye. 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 And now on to the outro. The link dumps link description and our red bubbles also link description too. And you get more than just shirts there. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintranslationmon at gmail.com or you can comment on this episode or message us on our website lostintranslationmon.com. On our website, you can also check out our release schedule and our blog posts. You can also follow us at Translation on Twitter, and you can find us on Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube, where I release a lot of virtual pet videos, and you can probably see my next video, which will be me mourning the death of my Tamagotchi Ocean. So we have a discussion thread on With the Will, and of course we have a Reddit thread in the Digimon subreddit. We'd also appreciate if you review us on Apple Podcasts, Sitcha, and any other podcast editing app that you use. And we'll read out the ratings on the podcast, of course. You can also donate to our Patreon, which links description from as, as a dollar a month. That gets you access to a list Discord server, but there are more rewards with high levels, such as notes, early episodes, and more. And thank you to our current supporters on Patreon. Joe, Anime Guy, who's Anime Guy, Kurosaki1 on YouTube, Stephen Reeves, who's a Wildfire64 on Archive Our Own, Kaidawashi, Chisai, you can follow on Tumblr at Chisai236, 
Kyle, Tom, Lismet, who's a Lake Mono Tumblr, Nicholas, Maramaimon, Sam, Spiral, Keith from Gone Will Hunting, a Hunter Hunter rewatch podcast, Silverhead Freak 25, Magnus, and Lucas. You can also make one of today's on a PayPal, which you found in the description. It's paypal.me slash Edramon. You can also donate to me on my coffee account, ko-fi.com slash Edra. And of course, thanks to Quinn for joining me, but she has left, and Stevie for sending us through their thoughts. And of course, wouldn't you know it, I go through the outro sequence without fumbling a word when no one is here to hear it and celebrate me. So thank you for listening, everyone, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!